Hi, I'm Sarah Jen and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be walking you through my painting of my mum from 1988. So she was in her late 20s in this photo. So the photo I'm using um, is an old family photograph and it wasn't actually of my mum in particular. She was actually in the background. I was looking through and I thought, oh, my mum looks really nice there. She looks um, like she's thinking about something and that she's caught off guard. She wasn't expecting that photo to be taken and for her to be in it. So I find it really interesting to pick out pictures that people wouldn't normally choose. So I'm sort of a fan of choosing that caught off guard moment instead of a posed picture. So I was actually struggling a lot with getting the right colour for her face. So I don't know if you could tell, but her chin, I had already done this before the video started and I had done it so wrong. It took me ages to find the base colour to actually <laughs> build on with colour. I had sort of shaded her chin grey and purple and I thought, oh my God, it's so strange that, you know, I've done coloured portraits in pencil before and I've never really struggled with getting the colour right but with paint for some reason I just really struggled. So in this picture she's actually quite sunburned. I think she'd just been on holiday so she's got quite a red nose and sort of under her eyes is quite red. So to try and get that colour without looking like a tomato was quite difficult. <laughs> so what I did and what helped me was instead of using a white canvas I actually used a brown linen canvas and even though I did struggle at the beginning I managed to be able to find the tones a lot easier on the brown canvas than on white. I had attempted um, a self-portrait on a white canvas and I just looked hideous. It was just awful. I was so red, so purple and I thought I just don't know how I've got this so wrong. So the colours that I did actually settle on that I think worked really well. So for that base skin tone that you can see on the chin there and that I'm applying here on the neck, um, I used titanium white, unbleached titanium and light portrait pink. Um, and I used Liquitex basic acrylics. So I used that for the base. And then as you can see here, I'm actually building up colour. So I'm building that up with Natfall Crimson, Burnt Sienna and Raw Umber. So Raw Umber is the darkest tone that you can see there. And when I am painting, I just sort of push the colour around with my paintbrush. I'm not doing it like a perfect blended um, gradient. It's just sort of pushing the colour on and mixing it together. And you could spend ages on one part um, just pushing the colour around, mixing it in. And I mean, when you look at this painting close up, it is not by any means blended beautifully. But I quite like that sort of mottled look. I think it gives it... Um, something a bit different and the fact that I'm looking at an old family photograph I like looking at sort of memory within my work I feel like it lends to that theme of memory and it being almost mottled and hazy it's not a perfect realistic picture so when I am painting I find that I get the colour that I want for the say the darkest tone and I apply it and then I mix it on the canvas. So once I've applied that darker shade, I then go back in the lightest shade and I sort of push that in. And as you sort of push it round the canvas, you keep applying the dark, keep applying the light, it sort of melds together and creates that gradient. So I also find that once you've applied the dark colour and it's wet on the canvas, then you apply that lighter colour that's also very wet on the canvas. When you go back in again with the darker colour to blend it, because it's wet on the canvas, it will um, move together and blend. So I think instead of trying to mix it on your palette and thinking this is the gradient, these are the three colours and I'm going to try and mix those, it's so much easier to just whap it on the canvas and get it moving around and it will blend together if you move it around enough. So as I said with the reference picture, it was an old family photograph. So the quality of it, especially since she's in the background, was quite poor. So a lot of the stuff that you see me do, I am picking out the colours that I can see within the picture, but I'm also adding a few more details and trying to make it look sharper. Uh, not too sharp to take away from the fact that it is, um, you know, an old photograph. I want to sort of portray that slightly in the um, in the actual painting. I don't, for me, just personally, I'm not, I, I love looking at it, but for me, I don't like to do perfect, realistic. It's literally the photograph. It, you could look at it really closely and it still looks like a photograph. I like that painterly feel and I like it to actually be 
seen as a painting and they think wow that looks like a photograph and then you go a bit oh wow it's painted you know you can see all the brush strokes all that kind of stuff so here i'm painting a hand and i know a lot of people find hands extremely difficult i absolutely love painting hands drawing hands my advice is when you do paint a hand or draw a hand do not look at it as a hand do not think i am about to paint a hand now and here is a finger here's the other finger you know it just doesn't turn out the way that you want it to when you think about it like that so even for a face if you look at it and see it as a series of lines groups of shading you will end up with a completely different result so me doing this hand here i did not look and think this this is the hand that i'm drawing it was i used a grid method so i gridded my reference picture and i gridded the canvas and in each little square, I was like, right, there's a line here, there's a line there, there's a diagonal line here, diagonal like that intersects this one, and that goes there. And then as I'm painting here, it's literally right, there's a bit of a shade in there, there's some group of shade in here. It's, you've got to look at it as shapes, lines, shading. If you're looking at it as a hand, you're never going to achieve what you want to achieve. So another thing I would say is when you are painting or drawing, do not beat yourself up if it is not looking the way that you think it's going to look. So here, her eyebrows, they're so blocky. I mean, do anybody's eyebrows really look like that in real life? I did not do great in the detail, but as I said, the picture reference was just so awful. But she did have very dark eyebrows, and I sort of just let myself off. I thought, well, am I going to spend time on the eyebrows? Probably not. I've got a lot more to do on this, the hair, for instance. So I just thought I'm going to do the eyebrows the way I'm going to do them and I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't think they look great because it's about the overall um, look of the painting. I mean, if I'd done like proper big slug eyebrows, I think that would have been awful. I have tried to add a few bits of detail sort of on the inside of the eyebrows. So the hair again was like the eyebrows. There was literally no detail in it. So she's got a perm here. And I was thinking that's that's so many curls. What am I going to do? Am I going to look up a picture of somebody else with a perm? So, I mean, here I make it look like a hedgehog. Because I'm trying to pick out the lightest points and think, well, let's just imagine there's curls there. I am not going to do every single individual curl. Because as I said, I've not done it to, um, you know, very realistic and photo realism. So I thought, let's just try my best here, give an impression that she's got some volume and depth to her hair. I mean, I think I probably could have spent more time on this, but I am not the best at hair. I do not particularly enjoy doing hair. It kind of gets on my nerves. So here I'm doing her bag strap. I think it was a leather bag. I just tried my best with this. Again, the reference picture was terrible. So, you know, I didn't have much detail. I didn't have any sort of like the grain and the lines that you get in leather. I just thought, I'm just going to shade it. You know, I tried a little bit there at the bottom with the sort of spotted light spots to try and get the sort of the grain on it. But I thought, I'm not going to add in any sort of stitching because I can't see any. I'm not going to imagine it. And I thought, I don't want the eye to be drawn away from the face so people be like, oh, what a great leather bag strap she's got on there. Like, no, I want them to be looking at the face. So here, oh my God, my absolute favourite bit was the glasses. Can't tell you why. It just, I just so enjoyed doing this. I think it, once I'd filled in the glasses, it sort of just made all that shading that I'd put on the face sort of just pop and just, it finally looked like she actually had a pair of glasses on. So I think she had pink glasses. She's got the, she's got the Deirdre Barlow glasses going on here. Very, very fashionable for her time. So I think they were like plastic, but I was just Again, going with the picture, I was looking, right, there's a dark bit here, dark bit there. And I think as well, the gradients on it, the shading gradients were so small. So it was a very quick dark bit and then a very quick light bit. So it was a lot easier. I wasn't like having to blend out into a huge space like with the face. So it was just a lot easier to sort of get it um, shaded and get it looking realistic. So I'm adding quite a lot of light spots. I think whoever took the picture, because it was on... um um, a film camera obviously it had a huge flash so she's got quite a few light spots on her glasses and i think adding those really helped them look like they had like the the lens in them because i think at this point it still kind of looks like she's especially on the left lens that i'm working on now it, it does look like she's just got no lens in the actual thing so yeah adding those really helped make it pop so here I'm moving on to the jumper. So it was a knitted jumper. I think mum actually knitted herself. You know, she's very talented. Uh, but I was thinking, again, I don't want it to be this photorealistic thing. So am I going to imagine all of the stitching and all of the 
the knitted lines I thought uh, no I'm gonna do an impression of it like I've done with the rest it would I think it would look odd if I'd gone all out on the jumper so it was actually quite patterned I, I think my mum when she explained what the the jumper actually looked like I was like well I'm kind of glad that the picture didn't show any of that because I just can't be bothered doing all that stitching so yeah I was just having like the cable at the top um and I think I was thinking at this point, how am I going to do an impression of it? I thought, let me start with the, I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, let me just start with the initial shading that I can see of like sort of the ripples in the jumper, the way it sat on her um, chest and the way it sat on her shoulder. I thought, let me just get that down and then I'm going to worry about what detail I can add in. So on the shoulder, she actually, I think, had quite a patterned bit. I think that's what that blob is. Um, that was quite a patterned piece on there but I thought again I'm not I could see that one slightly better on the picture but I thought I'm still not gonna add it in I don't want to overwhelm myself so in the end as we can see here I decided I'll go for little dots I thought I'll just pick out so from a distance when you see you can see that there's going to be texture and there's going to be depth in the little spots maybe you're thinking oh yeah she is wearing a knitted jumper but when you come up close it is more of that um just impression of the jumper itself so another bit that I had no idea what I was doing with was this glass. And I thought, well, you know, I'm looking at a reference picture and if I copy the lines and the shading, it's it's just got to look like a glass in the end. I, that is literally what I was thinking. So I was kind of a bit thankful that she was wearing a blue jumper because, as I said, I've not really done a glass before, but I would say that I would add blue into it. I would put blue in that. So I feel like it was to my advantage so that any mistake I would have made by adding blue has sort of been covered by the fact, well, she's got a blue, she's got a blue jumper on, so it's obviously shining through the glass. So I actually had the stem here. It does look a bit wonky for some reason. I mean, my grid method, maybe it's not as good as I thought it was. Um, it does kind of look like she's broken the glass. So her ring as well, the little jewellery that she has, so that, oh yeah, I actually had to get the real, she still had this earring, I had to get it out because I was like, mum, I can't see it, can you help me out here? So I think this is the last detail I had, and then here's me signing it. So, I mean, this piece took me quite a few weeks, I think it took me about a month, um, but I am so happy with the end result, and I hope you like it too. I have actually entered it into a competition, fingers crossed I actually get through the stage two of it. Uh, so yeah, here's a few stills and thank you for joining me and thank you for listening to me ramble and see you in the next video.